So today I'm gonna show you my Robinhood growth portfolio. We're gonna take a look and see how it's been performing, the stocks I own, and kind of how things have been going over the last couple months. I haven't actually done an update for this portfolio in a while, and it's not because the market was down. I actually don't mind sharing that. If anything, I love sharing that because then I can show people that I'm still buying even when the market's down, and I will actually do that too here. I can show you back in like, you know, when I was buying stuff. So. Right over here, you can see my portfolio is at $3,408. And you can see, uh, if we go to the week, we had a really good week right here, over 16% in growth, uh, $490 in you know dollars gained. Uh, you can see here the last month, $638 uh, right there, and then a 23% growth. Uh, last three months, we're still up about, what is that, 12%, which is $362. And then the last year, we're still up 60%, which is about $1,272. Now, uh, you can see here my buying power. I have quite a bit in my buying power, but that's mostly because I just went ahead and started a Robinhood Gold account, uh, mainly so I can test it out on my main channel and just kind of do like reviews and like breakdowns for it as well too. But uh, you can see here we had this, you know, big spike of, not big spike, we had um, our high right here on February 11th at $3,500 and then it dropped as low as $2,116 back on May 13th. So that was a pretty significant drop. Like I said, I didn't show anything at that time, but it's not because I didn't want to. I actually, like I said, I love sharing that stuff. And the crazy part is I actually did end up doing some buys around this time because when I opened up the uh, Robinhood Gold, it gives you like some margin and I actually used a little bit of that to buy during this massive dip. And you could see just over the last you know couple of weeks, it's gone up dramatically. So it worked out really well for me, but you know some of that's timing, but I'm also investing for some of these companies a little bit longer. Uh, some of them, if I have some really good gains in a short period of time, I will sell. Uh, the only main one I won't sell, I'll kind of go over here in a second. Um, so let's kind of take a look and see the companies that I have uh, here on the platform so you guys can kind of get an idea. And if by any chance you are somebody who doesn't have Robinhood and wants to get started with them, I'll have a link for them in the show notes. It does support out the channel, but it also gets you a free stock. So I mean, why not get a free stock? in general. Let me know in the comments if you open up and get a free stock what you actually got. So with Virgin Galactic, you can see they're currently trading for $3.10. Uh, they've had a really nice spike, where was it, in the last month? Yeah, they're up about 32%. Got about $1,800 in this account here uh, in total, which, uh, you know, almost 600 of that is returns and gains. Uh, my average cost is about $20.45. Now here's the cool part. Uh, my average was about like 23 to $24 uh, a couple months ago, but then when I just recently bought more in in May, it dropped down pretty significantly. I have about 60 shares, well, I have exactly 60 shares, and this is about 43.93% of my portfolio on Robinhood. Normally, just a heads up, if that was in my regular portfolio by itself and that was this is all I had, that would be extremely over leveraged for one company. But when I consider my M1 finance account and my Vanguard stuff, like that's a very low percentage overall with $1,800 in this stock. Um, you can see here, if I scroll down here, this is what's really cool. So back on May 11th, I just bought one share at 1430. And then on the 13th, I bought twice, uh, just because the first time I was like, damn, this is really, really low, uh, in cost. So I, I bought nine shares at 1529 and then I bought another 10 shares at 1545. So that really lowered down my dollar cost average. And again, this is the 13th. So if we go back and look, where was it? So it's, its lowest was on the 13th, and then it started going back up from the 14th and beyond. So, you know, that timing was very lucky in that regard. I wasn't thinking like, oh, this is the bottom, like now I gotta buy. I just, I had the opportunity with a little bit of margin on Robinhood Gold, and I like this company and I wanted to own more shares. And at 1550 or whatever I paid, I thought that was a smoking deal. So I ended up buying quite a bit. If they go to their 52 week high, their 52 week high was 59.41. If that get, if it gets back there, like I'm I'm making some really good gains there. I probably still wouldn't sell this company just because I do plan on holding them for a couple of years. And then if we look, the next one right here is Social Capital. Now Social Capital is actually um, they kind of combined with SoFi, and I do like SoFi, so I wanted to kind of have some ownership in there. So this one I have, uh, you could see their current price is 20.65 as I'm recording this. Uh, my market sh uh, value is $516, 17.62% gain so far, which is really nice. My average cost is about 17, uh, 1756, and then I own 25 shares. 
and I did buy some on the dip as well too. So on the 13th, I bought three shares. So not a lot. If I bought more, it definitely would have helped drop my dollar cost average. Um, so that would have been nice if I ended up going that route. But nonetheless, it's still doing good. This one, if it if it jumped pretty dramatically in a short period of time, like I might sell it. I'm not like die hard into it, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, LDI right here, this is Lone Depot. Uh, we have about $338 in them. Uh, we're up only about 1% currently. They had a pretty large dip for a while there. You can see uh, they had, let me see what their highs were, 23 or so dollars. And then, yeah, back on the 13th, it dipped as low as 1210. I don't know if I got it at 1210 or not. Oh, I got it at 1240. So I got 10 shares at 1240. They did pay out a dividend. Uh, that was a special dividend, so it's not reoccurring. Uh, but that actually lowered my dollar cost average to 16.77. Now I own a total of 20 shares on that one. This company, yeah, if, if this company jumps up pretty significantly over the next couple of weeks, I could sell this one. I uh, don't really plan on holding them very, very long. Uh, next one here, we got Arc. So right now with Arc, we have 671 dollars in the in the account. Uh, about two percent down right now but it would have been worse because i actually did dollar cost average so we are at 114 dollars on this one with six shares and if we go down here on the 13th i did it twice uh one at two uh two full shares at 98 dollars and 22 cents and then i did another one for 0.4 shares to make it an even number because i had fractional shares with them uh, and that one was at 98.90, so a little bit more than the first uh, buy that day. But if I bought a lot more, I would have definitely dropped this dollar cost average significantly. But, you know, you just don't know when the bottom is. So that's a big reason that I'm always trying to be a little cautious. But nonetheless, you know, this number would be much lower if I didn't dollar cost average at that point. Um, and then if we go next up is going to be Tesla. I haven't really done anything with this Tesla stock on this platform because I have bought more of it on M1 Finance. So I have about, I don't know how many shares I have on M1 Finance, but I have definitely more than I think three shares. But uh, overall, you can see here, so the market value is 656. We're up about 130% on this right here. Our uh, average cost is $270 and we own point or 1.05 shares on that one. Um, I didn't, I don't think I bought anything on the big dip. No, I didn't. So you can see the last time I purchased anything was March 5th. I put a little bit here and there, but like I said, I do most of my Tesla purchase on M1 Finance, which I do have here on the channel. You guys can watch those videos as well. And we have Zoom here as well. Um, I'm thinking about getting rid of this one sooner rather than later. Uh, we have a total market value of 121 bucks. We're down about 10%. This was pretty significant a couple weeks ago with the, with the big drops uh, back here, like, on May 13th, it was down significantly. So we were down pretty heavy on this one. Uh, my average cost is 368 and it's currently 332. So we're, we're very close to breaking even. Um, and we own 0.365 share. So we barely, we don't even own a full share of this. To be honest, I don't even know why I got really into it, but uh, I did buy during that big dip. Let's see, where was it? So uh, the 13th, uh, we bought some at 278. We bought a little bit there, and then we bought another fifteen dollars on that same day at two eighty twenty six. So, yeah, we uh, that day I ended up buying once and buying twice with pretty much every single stock that I had. So I, I brought this average cost down significantly, which now obviously I'm only down ten percent, thirteen dollars. Not a big deal. I'm curious if I should just get rid of this now or if I should wait till I break even. You guys can let me know in the comments what you would do in my position. I'm thinking maybe holding off just a little bit longer um, and then getting the you know that break even at least and then using that money to invest in other companies. Or if I sell now, I can use those uh, funds to maybe invest in some of these other ones. But at least I bought during that dip, which really helps out because then now my dollar cost average is way lower than it was at one point. I think it was up to like $400 per share on there. So as I mentioned earlier, I do actually have other portfolios that you can check out, which I'll link up right over here so you can see how those are doing and how they're performing and you can keep on learning with investing. My name is Dennis and I'll see you in the next video.